Okay. Um, welcome everyone. We'll start the presentation. So my name is Kiralee Newcomb. Um, I'm a Wooshka Literacy Specialist and I'm also an uh, MTA School Consultant. Um, so I'll be... Oh, I see. Well, but she's muted us. So she keeps... Oh, she's probably hearing me now. <laughs> yes, I am hearing you now. Um, just if we can, please keep your um, audio to mute and your video off. Um, it will just improve the quality of the presentation as we go through. I'm actually recording this presentation as well. So you can get um, a recording of it um, following the end of the presentation if you just email support at wooshka.com.au. Um, and my colleague, Tanil is joining us today and she'll be responding to your, qu uh, your chat questions as we go throughout the, um, the, the webinar. So feel free to start chatting away um, and Tanil will answer your answers your questions. Um, at the end of the session, you can actually uh, download the chat as well. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, we will continue having questions for about 10 minutes after the presentation as well. So you'll have plenty of time to ask more questions. Um, if you require support or you've got additional questions uh, later on after this is all finished, you can also email support at wishka.com.au and someone will be in contact. All right, so at the, um, following the end of the meeting, this is the chat area. There are three dots. If you press on the three dots, it will give you the option to save the chat. So it might be um, beneficial for you to, to save the questions and answers for yourself for later on. All right, well, let's get going. So Wooshka Literacy, it's a cloud-based um, program. Um, and cloud has many advantages. Um, it means that uh, you're using a browser to access the, the product instead of an app, um, which avoids all kinds of administrative issues with having to download and update um, uh, re regular updates all the time. When you log into Wooshka, you are logging into the most update version of the product, which is fabulous. Um, the other advantage to the cloud-based system, which Wooshka Literacy is, is it is device friendly. So any device, iPad, PC, Apple, um, tablet, it doesn't matter. Anything that has a browser, um, you can access Wooshka through. Um, which makes it a lot easier for families to access Wooshka as well because they don't have to be specific with the type of device um, that they have in their home. Um, saying that, our preferred browser would be the Chrome, um, Google Chrome uh, browser. It just allows for more functionality and that's pretty much across the board for all, um, for all cloud-based products. Um, Google Chrome is, is number one, and also um, Firefox is, is, is also um, very function friendly. All right, so this is um, a correlation chart that we use, um, and it gives you some comparisons of reading recovery and the colour wheel, um, both invented by the New South Wales, uh, New South Wales, New Zealand um, Ministry of Education. Um, and this is the levelling that Wooshka literacy is based on. So we start at magenta and go all the way up to 31 plus plus. So anything that is on 31 plus and, and above goes into the, the black box at the, at the top there. Um, well, you can download this in um, helpful resources and I'll show you where you can download this um, at a later date. Um, but as you can see, there is um, reading recovery levels and also Fontes and Pinnell and also the, the colour wheel. So what you're familiar with, you can compare. The next slide I want to show you um, explains about the Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid. And this is, um, is the, the model that we have used for comprehension in Wooshka. So one of the reasons that Wooshka was invented was because we wanted to encourage students to really concentrate on their comprehension, not just their reading. And so every one of our 650 readers has a quiz at the end. It's only four or five questions, but they are very, you know, uh, succinct questions and they have a purpose. And um, they are used modelling um, 
this um, hierarchy. So I just wanted to show you that so that you had an understanding that there is actually a method to the questions. Um, down the bottom levels, at the easiest levels, they are, you know, their memory and basic understanding, uh, understanding. But as you go up the levels, the questions actually become, become quite difficult. And sometimes the answer is not even in the reader. It is about interpretation. So it, it is, um, they're great questions. Um, all right. I think that's all we need to look at for the, the slides. We'll come back to that one. I'm just going to change my screen now to um, the Wooshka website. So hopefully you can see that now. Okay, so this is the website. I'm actually using one of our um, presenting websites, which is actually the, the New Zealand website. We have multiple um, Wooshka websites, Australia, New Zealand and worldwide. Um, so if you log in, you should have been um, sent a, a registration email where you set up your password. Your email is always um, your full education email. The password is whatever you made it. Now, if you forget your password, um, there is a, a forget password link just here, or you can contact your Wooshka product coordinator at the school and they'll be in contact with us to sort. So when you log in, you will see these lovely colorful cards. And what these are, are all the different screens to Wooshka literacy. They actually tell you what you can do in each of the screens. So this is great when you're first starting out on Wooshka and you can have a good explore. As you become a little bit more familiar with Wooshka, you'll realise which of the screens you want to be in most of the time. And you have these shortcut keys down the bottom of the screen. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be using those for most of the, the presentation today. Um, and they are the most popular of these colourful screens. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek into the reading boxes, which is our virtual library of Wooshka literacy first. We're going to go back and have a look at that a little bit later in more detail but I just wanted to show you what Wooshka looked like. So when you log into the reading boxes um, shortcut here, you will see uh, multiple levels in the color levels, as we showed before, and the reading recovery levels here, okay? Um, underneath all of these books is a mountain of um, teaching resources. So we're going to come back and go through a couple of books so that you can see um, what is um, offered as teaching resources for you. And there's a lot. Um, and I'm going to show you this fabulous function called the filter, um, which we all love and gives so much meaning to um, digital readers because you can't do that with physical readers. All right. So let's We'll hop out of the reading boxes for now and we're going to go straight into class list because this is really important. Class list is basically where you set up your student experience. Uh, you will have had your classes loaded up for you. So hopefully you see when you log into your class list page, um, your student's first name and surname. They will have a username, which is system generated. It's their first um, it's their initials and a four digit code. Um, now you will notice that there are blue dotted lines under a lot of these um, words here. Now your golden rule is if it has a blue dotted line, it is editable. So if Sienna likes to be known as C or another nickname, you can change this as a teacher. You have the power to change anything that is um, underlined with a blue dotted line. So don't feel worried about changing any of that. Sometimes you may have been set up by a password. Um, you may have been set up with a password for your class. If you don't like the password, you can change that as well. You can change it individually for each student or what's most common um, for schools is that we change the whole class at once. So let's do that. You go up to the manage class button, gray button here and we choose the set class password. And I'm going to put 
in, which is read. Now that instantly changes every one of the students' password to read. So their unique username, but they have the same password. The next two columns are essential. Before you send home your logins to students, they must have been given a reading level and you need to decide what level access you're going to give each student. Now, this is a student by student thing. Um, you know, you can, you can do it very individually um, and really personalise this. And um, that's one of the benefits. So Sienna is reading at black level, 31 plus plus. She's a great reader. And you're giving her levels access um, to her reading level and one level below. Pat Clever is reading at gold level and you have given her reading level only because you know that Pat needs to be kept on track. She can kind of get away um, with not doing what she's meant to be doing. She gets distracted. So let's just narrow it in for, for Pat and give her the reading levels only. Now, once you do those two things, you are ready to, um, to print out the student logins and send them home. So let's do that and show you how that looks like. So the manage class button, again, very, very useful button, that button. Um, and down here it says generate student letters. So we're gonna do that. And this form fills into a PDF. So you've got the website. Now I'm on the New Zealand site. If you're on the Australian site, then you will have the Australian um, website there. If you're on the New Zealand site, you'll have the New Zealand site. You'll have your student name, their username and password. Um, and you can download that and print it, download it and edit it with snipping tools. You can just load the username and password into your portals for each student. All right, so there's lots of options there. Now I'm going to talk about options. So reading groups and reading group permissions, the next two columns are optional in Wushka. You don't have to set them, but there are some very good reasons why you might want to look at reading groups. So let's talk about them. We are um, in a remote learning situation. We don't know how long it's going to last. There are limited readers. So you may like to slowly release new readers to each of your students via virtual reading groups. And they work exactly like a physical reading group, um, except they're virtual. So you know how to group your, your children into um, reading groups based on their, their reading ability and comprehension ability. So that's what you would do. Um, and just drip feed them three to five, you know, every week. So they have uh, concentrate on new readers that way. And I'll show you how you keep track of readers in the reading group um, shortcut key in a second. Um, another reason that you might want to set up reading groups is for um, unseen texts. So you can set up a reading group for instructional reading or for assessment purposes and actually turn that off until you need to use it. You might organise a Zoom or a connection with a student one-on-one -on -one to do some assessment or some instructional reading, and then you can turn that on, and then the student can access those books that you have placed in that, in that reading group. Um, so the higher level um, readers, just mute all again. Um, the higher level readers uh, might enjoy libraries of topics um, or um, areas of interest, science, history, bio, um, biographies. I have um, some amazing schools doing fantastic things with reading groups and allocating their students in different project groups and libraries to do further comprehension activities and writing activities. So really, um, you know, there, there is... Uh, unlimited ways to use reading resources. The final one that I want to talk to you about is um, for a student, maybe Billy Tops, who is in the red uh, level reader he, uh, um, of reading. He is kindy or prep. Um, and I don't want to give him access to a whole level of reading. So if I gave him his reading level only, that's giving him access to 64 readers straight away. He's in kindy, he might find that a bit overwhelming. So let's give him access to reading group only, and I'm gonna put in three to five books a week, and that might be more um, you know, approachable for him. 
And then I set up a reading group called Fire Engines and place a few of the, the similar um, reader, uh, reading children in that same um, reading group and allocate readers to them three to five a week. Now, how to set up a new reading group is you go to Manage Class button and there is a reading group option. And then you can name your reading group, whatever you want to name it. And then all you do is allocate the reading group that you want your student to be in. All right, let's have a look at how you swap out reading books, readers each week. Um, so let's have a look at fire engines. So we know that Billy is in kindergarten. He's got four readers allocated to him. Uh, red level, non-fiction, fiction, you can see here. And it's time for him to have these readers swapped out. So I go over to the red level and here are all the readers for red level. Now I can individually archive each of these readers. One, if I needed to leave one because he hasn't quite finished that one, or I can use the toolbox, archive all books, submit, and now Wushka will place them back into the library. But they, Wushka will mark each of those books with a little folder. And it is indicating to you that you have allocated this book to this uh, reading group previously. Now you can still allocate if you want to, but it's just giving you a heads up. The ones with the plus sign have not been allocated previously. So you're free to allocate those if you want fresh readers. And there's another one. You can filter by fiction or nonfiction as well. Now, if you see a yellow dot on a reader, let's have a look. Where's our yellow dots? This indicates that you have bookmarked a book. No, I can't even see one with a yellow dot on it. Oops. Let's see if there's one in the yellow. So it will look like this. There's a yellow dot there. Wishka is indicating to you that you have bookmarked this book, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So you may have decided to use this as an unseen text for assessment purposes. Um, so it's just saying you may not want to allocate that one to a reading group. All right, so that's reading groups. Now let's have a look at student statistics. With all this reading, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of reading data and there's a lot of comprehension tests. And this is the other reason that Wushka was invented to provide teachers and students and parents with reading data. So you don't have to wait until the end of the week to get back the reading log to see what Sienna has been reading and how often she reads. Um, you can instantly see if she reads a title, this, um, this graph will move, all of the graphs will move and all of the indicators will change. Um, you can also see more information. So let's have a look at this. Monday, she read one book. Tuesday, she read one book. On Wednesday, she read three. Let's have a look more closely. So she read this book, bronze level, non-fiction. She read it for 19 seconds, twice, at 3.11 p.m. in the afternoon. So you really start to paint a very good picture about your reading routines of all of your students. This is a week by week for a whole month. And again, you can um, drill into that and have a really good look at when and for how long reading was being done. There are some other indicators here that you can have a look at, rereading or approaching new reads, um, the percentage that that student has worked through of the readers that you've allocated. Um, do they prefer fiction or non-fiction? How much narration are they using? Should you turn narration option off? Are they overusing uh, the narration function? And this is a graphical rep representation of um, of uh, comprehension quizzes. So at a glance, you can see um, the correct answers and the incorrect answers. So for instance, this one, this quiz was the latest quiz. She's got one, two, four, five, six quizzes. This one, um, she 
has three incorrect and two correct. So you might want to have a closer look at where she may have gone wrong. Let's go in there and then it launches the actual quiz and you can have a look where, where the student has gone right or wrong. At the bottom of the page, there is also a uh, generate student statistics report. So this is basically a snapshot in PDF form of this page with the student's name at the top. So that's great for filing away for teacher parent interviews, for your own reporting um, purposes. And it's just a snapshot in time, which is great. Teachers can also see all quiz results forever, um, as far back as this student has been using um, Wushka. So you can really see patterns emerging there as well. So that's Sienna's reading routine. This is what Pat's looks like, and it's just very interesting to, to see the different um, statistics that come up. All right, we're going to hop into reading boxes now. All right, so this is the, your, the reading uh, library, as I said before, where you can scroll through um, the different levels. Here's our filter. So let's do a little bit of filtering. If we were to filter on, um, let's say sports, um, we could do fiction or non-fiction or both, a page extent. So if you were doing a class reading project and you only wanted a reader that had 12 pages in it, you could select that. Um, if you wanted to filter by comprehension strategy, there are many options here. This is very popular. Um, if you would like to filter by text, if everyone could just keep themselves muted, please. Thank you. Um, if you would like to filter by text type, again, there's many options here. I feel like this is just the sort of thing you just have to play. You can just ask your questions to chat, please, yeah. and just keep yourself muted. All right, we'll keep going. So um, I've just done a um, filter option of sports, and we'll press uh, filter results for that, and you'll see, depending on your filter um, request, Wushka will give you um, the results here. And if they don't have any options for that level, it will just be blank. So the idea here is you could cover a comprehension strategy um, and organise your students into different reading groups and allocate a, an appropriate levelled book for them to approach that um, comprehension strategy. So it's very, it's very addictive actually, so lots of fun. So I'll leave you to have a, a little bit of a play with that. I'm just going to go in and show you now what it looks like for um, teachers. So when a teacher logs in, you see the book here and you can bookmark the book for later on and a copy of it will go in there. That is going to put the yellow uh, star on it for you. So when you're in reading groups, you know that you've bookmarked it because you've got a plan for it. Um, you have reader description, more reader description. You have metadata here theme topics, strategies, high frequency words, all the information is there for you as a teacher. You have Blackline Masters, lesson plans. These are very extensive. They're all downloadable and then you can upload them into um, your student portal so you can share them that way. Um, there are printable readers and at the lower levels, there's also wordless printable readers. This book, this reader is actually part of our reading records. Um, so you can use this as an assessment text. So if you wanted to use that as an assessment unseen text, then you would really want to bookmark that so that it gets that yellow star so that you don't use it in reading groups. And then to use the book, use <coughs> if you could just mute yourselves, please. Um, then we just move through book with the arrow. There is a narration function here if you want to use narration. This is an option that you can turn on and off for your student. At the end of the reader, when you exit out, there'll be a quiz 
as a teacher, you had the option to opt out, but these default to, comprehend, um, to uh, compulsory for your students. These are the quizzes of four or five questions based on Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid. Uh, so this at this level is obviously just low level recall using the, um, the, the information um, that they've just read and in the same format um, that they've just read. So we'll, it really will be very repetitive um, at this level. Now, Wushka is a traditional reader program. We expect parents will be sitting with their, um, their son or their daughter to be going through the reader like they would a traditional hard copy book and, and likewise going through these comprehension questions. Uh, parents absolutely love these quizzes at the end because they don't have to come up with comprehension questions um, after reading with their, their children. We've done it for them. So this is a, a big relief for many parents. Then there is a result. It's not too bad. Um, all right. So that is um, an example of a very low level reader. Um, if we went to a higher level reader and we're not uh, reading to learn how to read anymore, but we are reading just to learn, learning to read and reading to learn. On the other side of the spectrum in the black level, we can go into a book like China. Um, very high level. The content is um, extremely um, interesting to use as a springboard for further learning and activities. Um, there is comprehensive lesson plans in Blackline Masters, again, to download and then you can upload them into portals. But from uh, fluency levels up, you start having this, um, this option of called, uh, that's called discussion cards. And Obviously, being in remote learning, you won't be able to use all of these, but certainly some of these um, will still be um, relevant. So the discussion cards will always have an individual exercise. Now, again, these are suggested exercises. I'm sure you can, you can add to these and um, adapt with your own um, teacher content. Uh, this is a working together or a pairing up exercise, which would be great if we were in classrooms, but we're not at the moment. This is a group. Um, activity. So these are all trying to um, concentrate on oral comprehension. And then the last activity is always a writing activity. And we know that we love writing activities. So these, I just wanted to show you that these exist um, in the higher levels of Wushka. So it's not just a learning to read program. It really is a reading to learn program. And you can um, form libraries of these books to use as springboards to further um, comprehension. Um, activities and writing activities. All right, so that is um, the majority of um, Wushka. I'm going to show you just into one other area in these colourful cards called Helpful Resources. And this is where you can download um, some useful information for teaching and also resources to send home if you haven't yet done that. Um, so there is newsletter inserts and um, Facebook posts. Um, there is for teachers guides, so teacher set up guides, there's um, program coordinator guides. This is your reading level um, correlation chart that you can download for reference to yourself. This is where the reading running records is located. So you can download that, have a look what books have the running records attached to them, and then you can go about bookmarking the ones that you want to, to remain unseen. There's also a National English, um, English Curriculum link there for you to download and also progress um, markers by reading box. And so this is a familiar document. Um, it's in a lovely form though for you and it's just a checklist so that you feel confident before progressing students to the next reading box along the colour wheel. All right, so I'm just going to go back to class list once more. This is possibly the most important um, area to get started with your students. I also just wanted to make sure that you knew that you had options with narration for each student. And this is important with um, English as a second language. Um, you can turn narration on and off. So some students that don't need 
um, narration, you can turn it off. And other students that need narration, um, make sure that they have that on. Compulse, um, um, quiz, uh, end of reader quizzes are also um, adaptable. So you can have them on an optional basis. So if you think that it might cause a little bit of anxiety for some of your um, English second language students to have these as compulsory, you can change them to optional. All right, or no, you know, turn them off altogether. So I just wanted to let you know that there are options. It all adds to the student experience. All right, I think that is the, 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 the main areas of Wooshka that I wanted to cover today. Um, I'm going to hop in uh, lastly as a student and just show you what the student experience looks like. Okay. And if you hop in this way, you're actually logging in as a student. You're logging yourself out as a teacher and logging yourself in as a student. So if you read a book when you're in this mode, you are adding to the data of that, that student. So I'm just letting you know. Here we go. So the first thing you'll notice when you log in as a student is reading groups comes up. So if you have set reading groups for whatever reason, um, if it's regular um, readers that they're reading or a special project, that will come up first. So they know that that is their priority. Um, now we're in Sienna and she has four books here. You can see she's read this one once and she's 25% of the way through her project books. Now you've also allocated two whole levels to Sienna. So she can just browse through here and read whatever she likes out of these books. And again, she'll see um, which ones she's read and how many times here. Now her page has some data on it as well, which is fabulous for parents. She can favorite books as well. I'll show you how you do that in a second. She can see limited data, but it's enough to see that um, uh, her reading is moving the graphs and adding to the statistics. Um, and she has a limited amount of quiz data that she can access as well. But this is great for parents that have multiple children at home and are trying to keep track of how many um, re readers and how they've gone with their quiz results. If the um, parent isn't sitting with them at that moment, they can go back and say, oh, okay, let's have a look. You had three incorrect and two correct in this quiz. Let's have a look where you went wrong and let's go back and read that reader together now that I've got time and let's concentrate on, trade on the areas that um, you didn't understand. So that's a real comfort to parents. All right, so that is concluding. Um, I'll just go back to reading boxes and just show you one more thing. So if you just go into, the student goes into um, the reader, they can favourite. So it's much like bookmarking for, um, for the teachers. All right, so that's as much as I was going to show you um, today. So we can answer any questions um, that you've got via chat. trying to find my chat now just to see how the questions are. Here we go. I hope everyone's following along okay. Okay, I might just log out of here and log back in as a teacher. So I might demonstrate some of these areas for the questions.
This is our class list. So as I said to you before, um, the most important areas are obviously a password, reading level and levels access. So this is what they're reading at at home. Um, and you want to provide them with levels access and you can decide that by student. So with Sienna, we've given her the reading level and one level below. So this is all the options you have for the reading levels. Reading group only, which we covered with our kindergarten student, um, Billy. Reading level only, if you want to narrow down the amount of um, readers and reading levels. Um, reading level and one level above. Reading level and one level below. Reading level and levels below levels below reading level only and all levels. The most popular is reading level and one level, uh, level below. Just having a look at some of the other questions. Is it possible to group students from different classes into one reading group? Now, I do have a number of schools that combine classes for reading groups. And what we do is instead of uploading um, the students in um, different classes within Wushka, we actually upload them in um, a stage or a year group and then allocate the teachers to that large um, class. Um, and then they can mix all the students into to different groups that way, and that works really well. Now, as you know, you ha can have multiple reading groups. Um, you know, it's only limited by your imagination what you can do with the reading groups. However, only one can be allocated to a student at a time. So you can go from instructional reading groups to weekly readers by clicking through. Um, perhaps Billy wants to go into his reading support class and they have readers in there. Are we able to create a dummy account for teachers use so that we can use it through a video? Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but certainly as a teacher, you can go into all of these reading, um, all the readers in the reading box area and, um, and, and read from them there. So this is your access to all the readers and in a classroom setting, which we're not in at the moment, all of these can be used on the interactive whiteboard. So you essentially have 650 uh, big books in every classroom instantly. Thanks to everyone's help answering these questions. There's a lot of them out there. Thanks, Tanil. Thanks, Louise. Weekly readers. Um, look, that can that terminology might be um, a New South Wales term. Uh, weekly readers are what we send home with the students to read at home. So when I um, was naming that reading group weekly readers, that's because New South Wales students might refer to their take home readers as weekly readers. Um, you might make that take home readers. Um, it's totally up to you and your terminology. Um, this is free flowing text. You can name um, your reading groups however you need to.
is there a demo video to show parents and students, uh, students how to navigate this site? I think it's a great idea and I think we are putting together some information for you to send um, home to parents, um, but I'm sure we could also organise a demo video. Um, there isn't a lot of complexity to Wooshka from the, the student point of view. It's actually a very clean page with very little options, but certainly a lot of parents will be new to digital learning and I think that's a fabulous idea. Thanks for all your questions. They're amazing. I wonder what portals everyone's using. We've heard a lot of Seesaw. We've heard a lot of Google Classroom. What else are people using? Lots of Zooming going on. Okay, so we're all on a steep learning curve, aren't we? We're, um, Melinda has said that she's starting to use Seesaw next term. I mean, you know, it's incredible how much we've all learned in, in the space of so, so many weeks. Google Classroom, yeah. So we're, we're all going to be experts on all these portals by, by the end of term two, I'd suggest. And Wooshka's, you know, fantastic for that. You can um, record yourself reading some of the, the Wooshka titles and upload that into Google Classroom. Um, you know, digital technology, it's just limited by your imagination, really. Yes, Seesaw is definitely um, being preferred for the K to two stage and, um, and then Google Classrooms for the three to six, I've noticed. So I'm an um, EALD and last teacher, students in my class um, group, but how do I add them to my reading group? So, and you have access to their page. So let's set up uh, your reading group for you. So you go to manage class, create reading group. Create group. And we've got Billy Tops here and he needs some um, support from you. We're going to pop you into the reading group. And then we're going to go to the reading groups page. And we're going to find that new reading group. There's EALD. And Billy is in that reading group. And we're going to allocate the readers that we want to work on. With Billy. You can, assessing a book, jump into this magnifying glass, have a look at the metadata and the detail. You can even go further and drill down further and have a look at some of the teacher's resources. And then decide, okay, I like this one. Let's go back to reading groups and allocate this one. So that's instant. So now when Billy 
logs in because you've set him up with this reading group. He only sees his reading group and he'll only see those books that you've placed in the EALD. Now, if that was for part of the week and then the other part of the week, he went back to his fire engine readers, then that's fine too. It just is a quick change over. You're welcome. So we are a digital publisher and a physical publisher at MTA. So um, we enjoy being able to publish books into Wooshka when we can. We also have all of these leveled readers that are in Wooshka digitally, physically. So um, they can be purchased as well physically. So if you do have some students at home that are struggling with the technology, um, you can purchase the same readers that are used for all the activities um, with Wooshka um, in a physical form. Something to keep in mind. Any more questions? Does anyone want me to go over any of the pages one more time? While I'm waiting, I'll just show you what class statistics look like. I'll go to one of the classes that's got some reading data. Now, normally you'd be able to filter all of these data pages by school hours, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., home hours after 4 p.m. and before 8 a.m., or both, but of course, we live in a different world now. So this gives you a quick snapshot of your class. Who's reading? Who's not? Average time per reader might give you a bit of an indicator, indication um, to why their quiz results might be so low. That's a good snapshot. And then if something catches your eyes, then you can jump into the student statistics and have a look further at each of the students that you want to um, you want to support a little bit more. Hmm. Didn't like that. Not sure what's happened there. That's a shame. You may not like me being on a webinar. All right. So we'll just go back to um, the other slide to finish, and I'll just make sure that. We have the details. So this is where, hopefully you can see this. Uh, this is where you can download the, the questions through chat today. The three dotted, the three dots here, and it will allow you to download in a text file. And if you've got any questions or if you'd like a copy of this presentation recording, you can just email support at wooshka.com.au. 
And I'll just mention as well, if your school is looking for a free offer um, for a maths pro program, uh, we have partnered with St Maths and they are offering free access until the 30th of June. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy Wishka. Thank you, Kiralee. Happy Easter. Thank you. Happy Easter, everyone. Bye. 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 Happy Easter. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Enjoy the break. <laughs>